Hi, I'm Joe, and I wanted to welcome you back to More Fun Every Day. Thank you for tuning in. So I'm shooting my first vlog style video here. I uh, just got a new setup. Um, got a couple of the newer 660s. Uh, Sean Cannell recommended those from his channel. I also have the new Movo condenser mic, uh, Movo Pro, I believe. Let me look that up here. Uh, um, Yep, I got the new Movo VXR3030 shotgun microphone. Um, I, this thing can mount directly to my, my GoPro uh, Ulanzi body that I just purchased. I can also put it on this boom mic I got above my head that you can't see. And I think it's supposed to clean up my vocal quali quality. So I'd be interested to know what you guys think about it. How does it sound? Um, it's directional, so if anybody was behind me, watch this. Hey, Amber, say hi. Hey, what's up? Did you hear that? I heard it loud and clear, but chances are it was pretty dim for you guys. So, um, these new lights. I uh, have lights shining on my face. I've got a key light and a hair light over here. The only thing that I'm lacking is the light behind my back to provide some more distance from this uh, bookshelf background thing. If you guys like what you see, and you keep tuning in and watching, every once in a while you might see some cool stuff back there. Maybe we'll change it up, put some artwork on this wall perhaps. Kind of looking at my shadow. Um, I went to a guest's house. I went to the house. I went to a friend's house recently and we took some uh, breakfast burritos for dinner. We were eating breakfast for dinner and I took some burritos, some egg, bacon, sausage, ham, things, concoctions that I made up the other day. Super easy. But they liked them, and uh, I was told that I should make a video about them. So I did cook some more today. We went back to that friend's house again a couple weeks after we brought it the first time. And uh, so we made those today, and I have a couple shots I'd like to share with you guys of the process. If anybody's interested in knowing how to make a breakfast burrito, it's pretty simple. But uh, essentially you break in some eggs, put some eggs into a pan, Obviously, you guys have seen that before, but here it goes in very quick time. This first batch of eggs, I did 18. Bam, there they are. And then I throw in some sausage to a pan, and I cook that up. And I stir it for a little while, obviously. <laughs> and then, so when I do eggs, I like to do the Gordon Ramsay style eggs. If you've never Googled how to make an egg before, I highly recommend Gordon Ramsay's How to Cook an Egg. Um, I might put a link to it in the description below. But uh, essentially, you're constantly moving it. You cook it on high when it's on the burner, then you move it off heat and you stir some more. Just stirring it constantly, almost like a risotto, he says. And I found that it's one of my favorite ways to cook eggs. It's not, it's not for everybody. Some people like the dried out omelet style egg thing that we're all used to. And I grew up that way, and I still like it especially when you put ketchup all over it. But these eggs take it to another level. And uh, as you'll see here in a little bit, I like to finish them off with a bit of sour cream, cheese, put some extra butter in. And uh, of course, I, I like my thing, I like my eggs a little hotter. So I put in a little bit of uh, Cholula, spicy Cholula sauce, which I think is great. Um, and again, I did take this to a house that my kids were going to eat at and their kids were going to eat at. So I did not make it super spicy. I put in enough to, you can taste this, the seasoning. I didn't add salt to any of any of the things that I cooked today. Bacon's already, bacon's already pretty salty and uh, so is sausage. So I just put the seasoning on the eggs from the Cholula. Um, I mixed that all around. I actually did two pans of those eggs. So 36 eggs for this one recipe. Um, I also cooked three 24 ounce packages of bacon. Here, I chopped it up. I put it all into this big container that you see here next to that big bowl of sausage. I did four pounds of sausage. 
Um, obviously, I wasn't cooking for this one event. Um, we did take two pans of eight burritos to this friend's house tonight. And yes, we brought home leftovers. But uh, they were hit. Um, I also made three extra bags of five. So we now have in the freezer three bags of burritos that we can pull out and our family can eat. We have breakfast covered three times now. So a little bit of meal prep in there along with making a meal to go to a friend's house. Additionally, when I wrap the burritos, you'll notice I put a little, a little bit of sour cream. I like to um, put sour cream and cheese in first and it creates kind of a layer uh, that heats up really nice and creates a, uh, it holds everything together. It tastes good. <laughs> um, so I put sour cream in, cheese, eggs, quarter cup of eggs, quarter cup of sausage, quarter cup of bacon, and then I wrap this thing up, wrap it up nice and tight, and then I set them off to the side. When I got enough for one pan, I'll throw them all in the pan, and uh, kind of stuff them in there nice and tight. I didn't remember this at the time that I was making these. I didn't remember to get the final footage shots, but Sometimes I will take a little bit of butter and baste it over the top. It doesn't need to be drenched. Just rub a little bit on the top and then cover it in cheese. I will first, if, if everything that is going into the burrito is hot, I will bake it in the oven at broil for about five minutes with that cheese on top and it crisps up just perfect. Uh, if everything's cold, then I'll put it in the oven at 350 for maybe 20, 25 minutes. Um, with tin foil on top, and then I take that off and repeat the process. I'll put cheese all over it, and I will bake it on broil for another five, maybe six minutes, just until that cheese is nice and crispy and a little bit bubbly. So, as you can see here, we had a lot left. Um, we had a lot, we made a lot of burritos, and some are for later, some are for tonight. We will have probably some more in the morning because we'll bring probably five or six home. But, uh, that's essentially what it takes to make some pretty big, hefty, tasty burritos. Um, well, this was my first attempt at doing some kind of vlog. I uh, want to know, uh, give me your feedback. I want to know what you think. Um, if you guys, I hope that you guys will tune in and watch more of this kind of thing in the future. Um, this channel. So far, we've been casting our net pretty wide. Um, we've been doing Lego videos, nature walk videos, book reviews, food stuff. We did a cleaning project on our shed. I hope you guys uh, enjoy all of that kind of stuff. I've been getting a lot of feedback from a lot of you. Um, one of the biggest things I've seen so heard so far is that everybody would like it if we would do more, more talking, more communicating. I don't disagree. And that's somewhere that I haven't been super good at or comfortable with in the past, but I'm gonna try to branch out and try to do that a little bit more. Um, so I hope you guys will keep tuning in. I think on this next video, I'm gonna do a brief overview of this light setup that I've got going on, show you what is all in our studio. Um, and the thing I wanna focus on over the next couple weeks is those um, book narrations that Joseph's been doing. He uh, he really enjoys that. I think he was really good on his first one. And I think that... Uh... So many of you might know that we homeschool our children. It's something we wanted to do, nay, we maybe even felt called to do, prior to even having children. Um, Amber and I were married for three years before we had kids, and I think a year before we even got pregnant, it was something we had talked about and we started researching, actually. Um, and something we stumbled upon really early was the Charlotte Mason curriculum. Um, I, I, I shouldn't say curriculum. I should say the Charlotte Mason education philosophies. Um, she's written several books. She was involved in education a long time ago, 
and uh, had a lot of really good things to say about it. Uh, the evidence that I've seen from the children who have gone through the style of education Charlotte Mason philosophy produces is excellent. And uh, it's something I wanted for my children really early on. So we participate in uh, Charlotte, Mason, Charlotte Mason style education. And we are using a curriculum put together based on Charlotte Mason principles from a website called Amblicide Online. And one of the principles of Charlotte Mason education is that after they finish reading their book or their chapter or their story for the day or for that lesson, we ask them to narrate the story back to us. Um, it's not common to broadcast or make a show out of these. So I'm breaking a rule here and I'm putting them online. But when we first started looking into Charlotte Mason education, it was difficult to find anybody demonstrating narrations. And I personally think my son is pretty good at them. Maybe every Charlotte Mason student is in the world and that's fine. But when people are starting to research how to do school or how to teach their children, I think it'd be helpful if this resource was available. So we want to continue making several of these. Um, I'll tell you right off the bat that this first uh, book that Joseph just did, Choo Choo, was one of his um, year one, if not preschool, <laughs> uh, his mom started reading it to him when he was like one or two. It's one of the books that he's been read probably 50 times, maybe more. Um, and he's read on his own several times, maybe 20 or 30 times. Um, we let him oftentimes read before he goes to bed at night. And it's one of the books he reverts back to over and over and over. It is an easier book for someone learning how to read to read. Um, but it was, so it's probably one of his better narrations. He can still narrate the, the books that we're reading for year three or year two, and we will show some of those in the future, but they're probably going to be a little bit shorter. Oftentimes, uh, we, we limit the reading for a specific book to a certain time frame, like 15 minutes or you're going to read one chapter out of this today, and then we won't pick this book up again for another week, maybe even two. So some of those are going to be fewer and farther between, but this book, where he knows it so well, we were able to pick it up and do a narration. He narrated it in about 10 minutes. You'll know the videos. You'll notice the video is about six minutes, and some of that's filled with other things. Um, but he did a pretty good job in that particular narration about... Um, almost copying the book verbatim. He knows it that well. A lot of it was pretty specific to what actually took place or, or was stated in the book, which isn't a bad thing. Um, some of these other narrations might be a little bit shorter and uh, that's okay. There's not a, there's not a criteria for length on a narration for a book that I know of. And oftentimes two children could read the same book and come away with a very different narration, and that's okay too. For instance, my daughter, if she narrates a book, might come up with the clothing style or the color of the dress or um, the, the physical characteristics of the person described in the book. But my son might talk more about how fast the car went or the color of the car or the size of the train. It's different. It's different based on who the person is that's listening, and that's okay because not everybody is going to pick up on the exact same information um, because we're all different and we all have different interests and what piques the interest of my daughter who's six might not pique the same interest in my son who is eight and that's okay. Over time, those interests are going to shape who our children become in the future. And that's what we're trying to get to with our Charlotte Mason education is to bring out who our children are, not make them into something that I want them to be. So yeah, I branched this particular video off in multiple different ways, but there's more to talk about in the future, and I'm sure that we'll be doing that. So without further ado, I'm going to end this video. I hope to see you guys around for the next one. Thank you.